once again welcome to the 2023 Hall of Fame induction ceremony. My name is Michael Ferris. I'll be uh, Master of Ceremonies this evening, class of 1992. Uh, up first, uh, Mr. Walt Munzee. Sixty-six, we went to ten and five. Not bad. We beat FM, beat them several times. And unfortunately, I was at a funeral this past uh, Saturday, today, and yesterday for Tom Hall, who passed away. He was a longtime coach at FM, and uh, his room was next to mine for a long period of time, and uh, he certainly did a lot for lacrosse. In, in our area, that's for sure, and he'll be missed. Um, so it's been a long day here. We beat North Syracuse, sorry about that, <laughs> over there. <laughs> and uh, we beat West Tennessee. Not many schools beat West Tennessee, but we beat them a couple times, in fact. And we beat Beeville, we beat Watertown, we beat Geneva. So we did pretty well. The, the only time we lost at the end of that season, we lost the game to Lafayette. And Lafayette was the real deal. Laverne Doctor and crew, they were light years ahead. They could do with, with, with their sticks, the wooden sticks, what kids are doing today. So we lost to Lafayette at a night game at Reese's Field in Manoa. That's where we played, Reese's Field, Manoa. We were the first team in New York State to play night lacrosse. We had about 2,000 people come to that game. We lost to them 11, 10, and OT on a crap referee call. <laughs> and I know I refereed a lot of games, and you may have seen me in the dome and everything, uh, the national championship game, so I probably made some calls. And, 
I had to, when I stood in this spot a few years back, I had to award Paul Gay a goal that I took away in a national championship game at Rutgers. I ruled him in the crease, and why would I do that? He never went in the crease, he'd go, he'd go with the goal. Everybody wanted to score, you know, and here I come in, no goal or everything. But upon further review, it took a little while, we awarded him the goal here, you know. So he goes, well, well, I never thought a referee ever would uh, admit a mistake. <laughs> if you've heard Paul Gate talk, that's pretty much the way it is. So, yeah, we lost on a bad call. In fact, Paul DiMartino made a cross-check. Only problem is he cross-checked the player's stick that was passing right along the sideline. Larry Richardson, God rest his soul, made the call and uh, called a minute penalty. Lafayette ties the game. You go into overtime with a man down against Lafayette, you might as well put the goal on the board, don't waste your time. And uh, so we did lose that game, but that was pretty good. That was a historic game. Uh, Paul DiMartino is the, the, one, the player that I'm gonna be introducing. And uh, Paul, he came out, tall, skinny kid. Uh, and I handed him a stick in his left hand because I knew we needed a lefty and he didn't know any better and that's the way he stayed playing left hand. <laughs> Whereas uh, to Charlie Kaminsky back there, I gave him a stick in the right hand. I figured, you know, we'll, we'll balance this out and he always became, he always worked with his right hand so he didn't know any different either. <laughs> but uh, Paul, he really, really worked hard, really worked at it and uh, I moved him to midfield in that Lafayette game, and he scored seven goals for midfield. Should have scored all eight, we could have won the first game, you know? <laughs> you, you missed the shot there you had. And, but seven goals from midfield. He ends up getting a scholarship, and, and Simi, uh, Roy Simmons Sr., gave him a, he used to split his scholarships at that time. And he split his scholarship and gave it to Paul, and that was, that was pretty good. He, he starts out with nothing, learns some lacrosse, gets a scholarship to Syracuse University Division I school, and ends up becoming an All-American at Syracuse University. Um, that, that, that's pretty impressive. That was pretty good, and I was really pleased that lacrosse was able to you know, afford that and have that serve as part of his life. And uh, of course, he took it from there on his own medical school and the whole deal and became a major uh, surgeon, spine surgeon, and uh, from there, um, we're glad he didn't get hurt in lacrosse because that, uh, he, he really took his life to another level. But lacrosse was important and uh, I'm, I'm really pleased to be here and uh, in introduce Paul as a recipient of the 2023 Hall of Fame for ESM. I don't know how to follow them, to be honest with you. Uh, and actually, three days ago, I, I, I'm retired, looked at my emails, and there was this thing, we're supposed to give a talk after this. I said, you got to be joking. <laughs> I have taught conferences, everything. I don't mind doing that, but to get up here and start talking about me, it's, it, it's not. So I sat down over there, I wrote down uh, parents, team, and coach. So if I can break this down, I'm going to just put a couple little things into it. Um, I grew up in East Syracuse, obviously, and you know, it was East Syracuse, and it was the way we lived our life. Both my parents came over, immigrants, father in the 20s, the late 20s, and my mother in uh, 38. And um, first thing, you know, we're just there. Now, I 
got parents at home and I like to play sports because I did play different sports. So I'm going to give you an idea of what, like his the coach here said, uh, I did have uh, not only some who walked on the lacrosse field, but I also had some, some friends a little, so I had some, you know, scholarship. You know, there's a bunch of stuff to go with that. But I want to tell you what I had at home for parents. First, I'm going to uh, pick on um, my mother. My mother was a major thing for me in sports. And the reason was, the deal was, if I did not have straight A's, I could not play sports. And I had one episode where one of my English or something got into a B plus, and I had it almost pleaded, and the deal was within two weeks I would have that back in an A, and the teacher was ready to go with it. And so she really was tough on the academic part. My father was a little bit different. He, um, my grandfather, that I never knew, but his father was killed in a very road accident. There were four boys in the family, all four quit school, and they had to work to maintain the family. So my father basically was, as I was told by many people, he was a decent athletic, so maybe I got some genes from him. Not a lot of them, but you know, some of them. But my father's thing was, if I didn't play well in some sport, he got me beat. He didn't really say much, but I could tell by the look was like, not up to, you know, you gotta get a little bit better. And my father, in his saying, he wasn't too worried about the academics. He just wanted to make sure I had a promise him that I would not work for the railroad. He wanted me to get an education and do some things higher. So, I mean, here's the deal. <laughs> they tell you the two parents. Uh, I went through college and all of a sudden military management and all this other stuff. And I decided eventually I wanted to go to medical school. I wanted to be a doctor. So the date that I got accepted, I was on, you know, 20 feet off the, in the air. I called my mother. My parents were separated at this time. I called my mother said, hey, mom, I got accepted to med school. The next thing I was like, oh my God, my son is a doctor, you know, <laughs> doing the whole thing. She was happy. Then, next phone call was to my father. And then he, he looked at it and said, hey, does that mean you're not gonna start working? You're just gonna become a professional student. <laughs> so, parents have a lot to do, and I was fortunately to have opposite things for parents, but tremendous for me to be pushed on to, to try to do the best I can. My father had a great work ethic. He just put the coach said, well, I mean, I worked hard, I did it. At least I think I did. And I was fortunately with Coach Muncy, who was a high school All-American my senior year, and thank you. I mean, I know how else to say more than that. The other thing is team. It's, it's nice to be up here and getting some type of recognition. To be honest with you, when I got the phone call that they wanted to put, to, you know, put me up for this, and I kind of said, hold it. There are a lot better athletes out there. And I gave them some names, but they kept coming at me, and I said, okay, we'll do it. But when you stand up here, at least from my perspective, it's not just what I did. We started off, as, I, as Coach said, was uh, we put up a sign, I remember in my freshman year, lots of started a lacrosse team, meet after school, we had a roll-to-roll -roll projector showing his uh, playing against Portland. And I liked it then, to be honest with you, I don't mean to offend anybody who's here for baseball, I really didn't ever like baseball at all, and this was a chance to do a, a sport, I didn't even, never even seen a game or do anything like, we came from nothing. And it was a great idea, as I kind of said in the biography, for anybody who's seen it, what a great sport. You can run around with a stick in your hand and whack some guy who's got the ball, and then you got the ball to try to get it in. It was a movie big thing. And as a result of this, um, um, but when you're playing, this is a team sport. I'm gonna pick on a couple of guys here. Jim Baxter, no one probably knows him. He was a goalie. Goalies are a little wacky. I'll just say that. <laughs> Even a good friend of mine was this, uh, the, the goalie at Syracuse University for four years. We're still friends. 
he's still wacky, you know, but you know, it's just what it is. Uh, that Jimmy and Gary Gatsby, he was something on that defense. We did a lot of practice against him when he was in my room. Now, I'm going to do this, and I get the same time first. I want to take too long on this. Um, we had a midfielder at that time, and I'm sitting next to him, Bill Harvey. I will tell you, he is a stud. There was a couple of games, all they did, all I did was, I played in tech for a long time, but the thing was, they got the ball and I got it and then I got the glory because I scored some goals, so that was about it, but Bill was a stud. So, you had a great team, good chemistry, great coach. Last thing is coach. I had three coaches in my career. I had both as a Roy Simmons, uh, senior and junior, and good coaches icons, you know, Hall of Fame for everything else. But I'm going to tell you the best coach I ever had was Coach Munzee, period. He took a person, kind of tall and skinny, if you can really see the picture they had up in the young Gary standing in there. I remember all, I think it was about six foot five or six and about 185 pounds. I wish I was still a little bit lighter than I am now, but that's what it is. And he taught me everything I knew, and he also knew how to handle me. I remember a couple of games at halftime, we would have little discussions about things we were doing or not doing. So um, I want to thank the school, ESM, to even consider me. Um, and I, it kind of, I've been lucky. I've had a pretty blessed life or a good life overall when I look at things. And Seeing this again and going through this again, it really brought back a lot of great thoughts and memories for me. And I'm very thankful that this has happened and it's happened to me, but you can never forget the other people that are behind you and your experiences to, to, for me to be here. So uh, thank you for, for this. to invite Jack Julian up to speak next. Thank you very much. I'm Jack Julian. I'm honored that uh, Chet asked me to present this evening. I feel as though he was one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of ESM, if not the greatest. And last year I was honored to uh, present Britt Dalen, who I think was the greatest halfback that ever played at ESM, and he's right here in the back. First of all, Chet's nickname is not Chip, it is Pony. <laughs> I don't know where the chip came from, but he's always been the pony because he can run so fast. <laughs> the pony was a three-sport star at ESM playing basketball, baseball, and football. He was all county in baseball playing center field, pitching, and batting. As a senior, he hit 400. He was best at football when a pony was a speedy runner and an outstanding passer. As a senior, he led ESM to their first county championship title in history. He threw for 564 yards and ran for 6.2 yards per carry, scoring 34 points. Chet earned a full scholarship to Division I Appalachian State in Bowie, North Carolina to study health and physical education. The Division I school, Appalachian State, he was a quarterback and a receiver. He scored seven touchdowns and had 188 yards against Wake Forest. Everyone knows it's Division I ACC school in one game, 188 yards received. I'm going to be calling Dino Babers to tell him that the Pony's got a couple of years of eligibility left. <laughs> 
since all the receivers are leaving Syracuse, Pony's available. He had a 38-year career with Charles W. Jacobson Rug Company, where he was vice president, purchasing and selling, traveling all over the globe for his company, selling oriental rugs. He even sent me and my wife to Turkey one time and told us where the place to go was. We walked in, we said, hey, we don't check growth back. I said, you do? You got the best seat in the house. <laughs> in Turkey, no less. He now enjoys coaching ESM youth sports and volunteering at the food pantry at Blessed Sacrament in Eastwood. His pride of his life these days is his three grandchildren, Jonah, Summit, and Hannah. Chet completed his football playing career in the prestigious Town of DeWitt Touch Football League where I was his coach. <laughs> all I ever coached was Pop Warner football, now I got all these characters on the team that are all great football players from ESM. Chet completed over 100 passes in the uh, Town of DeWitt Football League, and Carbo even caught a few of them, but didn't catch many. <laughs> He also had Mo destroying the opposition by racing in and tackling everybody in touch lead. <laughs> Back to Spartan football. Chet was first team all county quarterback and voted the outstanding senior athlete at ESM when he graduated. Some highlights from his senior year were against West Genesee, he passed for 184 yards and 7 of 10 completions and there were th three touchdowns, and he had a 44-yard run in that game also. Jack Griffin said in the paper, Chet ran the plays I sent him to perfection. Another game was against North Syracuse, where ESM beat him 36 to nothing. ESM 32, Cicero 3. Chet threw three touchdown passes, one a 60-yard touchdown pass. Next game, ESM 22, Liverpool 6. Chet ran for two touchdowns. Big game of the year against JD, ESM 22, JD 14. Spartans record is now six and one, and they're in first place. Chet's 22 yard pass was the winning score. Chet was voted number one quarterback in the league, and Jack Griffin was voted the coach of the year for the champion Spartans. Very proud to present Chet, the Pony Grossbeck. <laughs> nothing better in the world, the bonding and the friendships, the rivalries of the other schools. It's just, uh, it's just amazing. I want to thank you, Jack, for your kind words. Uh, these four dueling boys had a pretty good athletes, too. I know that. Uh, I want to thank the committee for all their hard work putting this together. I mean, it's just, it's beyond, it's, it's just amazing what you guys have put together here. I want to thank Karen Stuper, Mike Albanese, Mike Carr, Jim Gordon. Um, again, I'm just humbled and honored to be even thought of in this, uh, in this award. Oh, there's just so many fine athletes here in, in this area. Just not athletes, just great people. I mean, that's why I live here. That's why all my kids are still here. It's just people that care about each other and you just sort of hang around. It's, it's just pretty awesome. The uh, I want to thank some coaches, Coach Griffin, Coach Mattel. Uh, I see George is here today, George Magic Carroll. And George was the kind of coach where he'd, he'd have the, the speech before the game and you were ready to go out and just tear the door down. Of course, he was a uh, 
the Vincent Martin thing too, so we always had all those good uh, Green Bay grass fills, which were too much fun. <laughs> There's, uh, I want to thank a couple of my college coaches, Jim Brakefield and Fisher Dubay. Coach Brakefield, he was a typical football coach. I remember playing in the spring game and uh, getting tackled. I broke my nose in three places. I come, uh, coming off the field, he called me over and said, looked at me and said, Gross, but I can finally look like a football player. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I had a great team. I mean, I, I didn't do a whole lot winning, but, but the, I had a great power running team. I had, uh, I had big Boschko Mangowski fullback was just a power runner. Dave Shirk, Eddie Gerace. Dwayne Ratliff at end was just a great player. Defense, I had, uh, I had Joe Rosino. Joe's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Mo Sembrant, Mike Gilkey, who just lost recently. Jimmy Jackson, Johnny Almonte. So again, just a, just a good, strong team. And uh, I've just been blessed with a great family. As you can see, I got a big family, but uh, they're just they're just so awesome. They've always been behind me, my brothers and sisters, all my games. My mother came to one game, and I think I had my eyelid cut in half. That, that was the end of that. She never came back. <laughs> but uh, I always could hear my brothers and sisters screaming for me out there. Then I got my uh, my kids. Just amazing. My wife Angela, she's put up with me for all these years. I don't know why, but she has. <laughs> I got uh, my daughter Sarah, my son Seth, Adam, Faith. I'm just, uh, just so proud of all you guys. And I got uh, three grandkids, Jonah, Summit, and Hannah, who are the love of my life. I got Jonah, he's my nine-year-old. He's the, he's the next Hall of Famer. He's already already doing some crazy things, I tell you. But again, I just want to thank the committee. It's such an honor and privilege to uh, just be honored. And uh, again, thanks very much. I think you probably, uh, today, you, you put the TV on and you see the PPL, that's the Professional League, the Matt Palin League, he refs every game there. Uh, and you, you, you know that when you do watch lacrosse, it's covered so well, that the, the important thing with, with all, every team is a face-off, face-off guy. And you got a guy named Dar Nardella, out of Kazanovia. He's uh, plays for the PPL, Professional League, and he is probably one of the best face-off guys in the country, without a doubt. He's a strong kid. In fact, his dad played basketball for me at FM. Uh, Bill Hart, ESM player. He's a Syracuse player. Uh, if they had the Pro League in the 60s, Billy Hard would be the face-off guy that you'd be watching on TV. Billy could do it. He could bring it on the face-off. And that, that whole deal, starting with the possession, the aggressive play, uh, <clears throat> allowed us to be successful. You could have a, an offset team, but if you could come up with that face-off each time, you got a good shot at uh, scoring some goals. And Billy, uh, I, I don't know how much I taught him with it. I mean, I showed him a couple moves here and there, but he worked out on his own and he became one of the base, best face-off guys in the county, all county, several years in a row, all scholastic, the whole deal. Everything they had, Bill was on it. 
And in fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think we played in 1966. Uh, maybe Paul, you and Billy, did you play in the North against the North team? Yes. All right. We brought the North South game was held at Syracuse Stadium in 1965, and they best players, collegiate players in the country for the North against the best in the South. And Roy Simmons Sr. coached a local, he called them the, the townies. He got us all together, Syracuse lacrosse club guys, a couple high school guys, Laverne Doctor played, and Billy and Paul played, and Billy faced off against the All-Americans in the South, and we beat the South 9-5. And he's a high school senior taking on the big All-American from Baltimore and put him to sleep. Uh, Reese's Field, you know about Reese's Field? And I know a couple people got excited when I mentioned Reese's Field. It, Reese's Field had a gully on the, on the edge of the sideline behind the bench areas. Billy inevitably each game ended up putting one of the opponents down in that gully. Uh, I remember Paul Green came down the middle on a fast break from West Genesee. I don't think he would want to do that today if he had that option. He probably would have gotten rid of the ball before he got to the top of the box. But Billy was uh, the real deal and he put some people out uh, aggressively, legally, <coughs> legal hits, but he had a lot of power. And that carried further on in his football career also at the collegiate level. Um, so Bill, it's really a pleasure. You guys, you, you kept us going, you allowed us to survive and uh, you did a really good job with it. And I'm glad that uh, I've had the opportunity to get you to join on to lacrosse and had it become part of your life. And um, it's, I'm really pleased to be able to present this award to to you now, 2023 Hall of Fame, East Syracuse Manoa. like to thank my family uh, for coming and supporting me to, uh, today, this evening. But I, they did say one thing to me, though, before we came. They said, geez, Dad, please don't tell one of your jokes. <laughs> and I say, so I say, I promised them that I wouldn't. So instead, I'm going to speak from the heart. I'd like to say, thank some coaches. Because actually being an athlete, whether it be in high school or at the collegiate level, you don't do it by yourself. You receive some guidance, some teaching that helps you along the way. And so I have some coaches that I'd like to thank. One of the coaches is uh, Bill Metz. He's no longer with us. He was my football coach. Him and Don Squires. Outstanding people. The next coach I'd like to thank is an individual who I think very highly of, and that's Leo Johnson. He is a, was a wrestling icon in um, central New York area. He coached at ESM and then later coached at uh, Ballinsville. But recently his team, which I was a part of, uh, was inducted into ESM Hall of Fame as a team for the wrestling uh, achievements that they had made. The next coach is a, a coach that I had for several years, and he's not with us tonight, but uh, he is down in Florida, 
His name is Jack Griffin. Uh, what a wonderful guy. He, uh, he would get the most out of his athletes. Um, and we, uh, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed playing for Jack. Now, this last guy, I won't need this piece of paper for that because Coach Munsey was, was a coach that really took care of his people. Taught us a lot. And, um, you know, playing for Coach Munsey was, was easy. Um, and um, he really, really has dedicated his life to the, the, the game of lacrosse in this community and throughout the United States. So, Coach, I'd like to give you a round of applause for all you've done for lacrosse. But I think uh, what uh, Paul DiMartino said comes to play. We don't get here by ourselves. We have our coaches. We have our teammates. Our teammates is what helped us get here. And so I'd like to thank my teammates. I'm, I can't name them all um, because some of them aren't with us anymore. But I certainly can tell you that when we were playing lacrosse, it, my job was to actually get the ball down get the face up and go down and give it to Pauli DiMartino. Okay. And Coach says now, she was, uh, if you get the shot, you take it, but if you can't, you, you, you get it to Pauli. Pauli put it in. And you know what he did? Outstanding individual and an outstanding friend. Uh, Paul and I uh, lived three blocks from one another, as did John Novenci, who is no, not here this evening, but uh, was a, also an East Syracuse. Uh, guy who was a Hall of Famer today. So with that said, I thank my family for showing up and supporting me. And again, I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame Committee for a job well done. And thank you for the honor. Our next presenters are coming from uh, the East Coast, but way farther south. So if you can turn your attention to the screen, we'll have two presenters. Hi, everybody. My name is Milton Valerio. I coached the ESM Girls Soccer program for 30 years. It is a pleasure for me to say a few words about two of the ESM finest players. I had the pleasure of coaching these two young women. You have to be aware first that these players play in the early 1980s when ESN won one of the smallest schools in Class A. We play schools like Liverpool, Baldwinsville, and CNS, twice our size. Because of players like these, we held our own in the soccer field. Jill Morani. Jill was my first superstar before we started winning league and sectional titles. Jill started at all at ESM. As a player, Jill was strong, very good dribbler. She had deceptive speed, powerful shot, and a strong finisher. She scored 27 goals in one season. Jill was a four-year-old league, all-county, and an all-state player and was named to the All-American team. The second player is Wendy Williams. Wendy was a defender. During that time, we play with a sweeper. In case you don't know what that is now, is a player that plays behind the three main defenders in the back. Because of her speed and reading the game, she was able to nullify lots of the mistake that the defenders made. It dis her Decision on defensive play was outstanding. Only coaches can understand what she was doing. Wendy did something that's very rare right now, timing her tackle to the ball and not be called a foul. Wendy was a four-year-old league and all-county player, also a state player. Thank you for letting me say a few words about two outstanding individuals. 
What's most important is what they have become. They both have two things that it sets them apart. One, they both have self-belief and two, competitive fire. Thank you for letting me say a few words about two outstanding players. Good evening. I'd like to welcome and honor tonight's inductees into the ESM Athletic Hall of Fame. Pam and I regret that we could not be there for tonight's ceremony. However, I would like to say we thoroughly enjoyed the September induction of the 2000 girls softball team and the 1981 and 1982 girls basketball teams. Jill was a member, a player of both of those basketball championships. A little sidebar would be that in 1981, we were very talented, had a lot of seniors, so we were hit hard by graduation. So 1982 didn't look too promising with like two players returning. However, I will say one of the players was Cheryl Cole, inducted last year into the Hall of Fame, and the other one was Jill Morani, who's being inducted tonight. The leadership those two girls displayed kind of caught fire with the entire team, and they brought us along to that second championship in a row, which is usually not too common for ESM girls basketball, but wonderful time. Jill, a true three-sport athlete. She was an all-star in every sport she played. If someone were to ask me, what's Jill's best sport? I would have to say probably the one she's participating in at that time. Soccer in the fall, basketball in the winter, and softball in the spring. She has been truly a wonderful addition to this Hall of Fame and to ESM Athletics. All I wanna say at this time is thank you, Jill, for all you've done for ESM and for me. Welcome to ESM's Hall of Fame. Jill, please come on up. Unknowingly, these coaches helped me through my teen years and into adulthood. They instilled in me values that are part of who I am today. Dedication, perseverance, teamwork, strength, and resilience. And you don't realize that until you get older. I remember sitting in class in high school, watching the clock, waiting for the end of the day so that I could get on that field, see my friends, and practice. I don't want to 
to put any words into Jill's mouth right now, but anybody who ever had Milt Valerio and Hank Collins, those voices, you don't, you didn't need the picture, you knew who was speaking immediately. They're still uh, resonating. Uh, I'd like to invite up Gary Lewis to, to uh, introduce our next inductee. Start out, Gary Lewis, class of 72. That was my quarterback. <laughs> the, I'm sorry. The best ever. I love you, Chuck. I love you. I also want the opportunity to shake your hand, Mr. Hart, because as a freshman in 1968, I heard about this legend at ESM, Bill Hart. I want to shake your hand after this. Big ass. Big one. <laughs> Skip. Skip played uh, varsity lacrosse for ESM for three years. Skip played with myself for two. He just relayed a story to me that I, I had forgotten about that as a sophomore, uh, him and I got into a fight. He didn't like the way I was hitting him with a stick, and so we went at it. And I'm glad to know that because <laughs> he didn't take any crap. Skip was a great teammate. He was a great player. You could count on him. And that's what I need to be on a field with. He was a uh, all-county football player in 1973 with the, with the undefeated ESM team. A great honor. He was also all-county 1973 as a defenseman for, for the lacrosse team. Another great honor. I don't know if a lot of people know about this, but Skip and I played uh, as a, I was a senior, he's a junior, but we played in the very first sectional final game ESM ever played in. And I'm very proud of that. And we lost a, a heartbreaker over time. But Skip was part of that team. As important as that is, uh, getting him into this Hall of Fame, he deserves it. His, 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 his accolades, his achievements bring him in. But just as important to me is he's a, <clears throat> he's a great American. Naval Academy, two-time All-American midfielder in lacrosse. Commanded a submarine. Worked on the staff of Colin Powell. Recently retired, I'm not sure how many years ago, Skip, but I mean, that is an American hero, in my eyes. So, Skip, just understand how much that means to me, as much as you getting into this Hall of Fame, which you deserve above everything. So, Skip, thanks for being my friend, and thanks for letting me have the opportunity to talk. And I'm sorry about this crying crap, but I just... <laughs> <laughs> broken record here because, you know, I, I put my notes down before anybody else talked, and of course, I have the same things to say about how to be successful in life. Um, so I'm, I'm going to start from the top. But first, I want to thank Gary for the great words. Um, you know, I talked a little bit on the phone, but I did not expect to hear what I heard, and I, I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, I want to thank ESM for this honor. Uh, we heard how much work and effort it takes to put this together. You know, we got nine of us in this uh, in class, so I'm sure that took even more time. Um, also, I'd like to thank Terry Allen. Terry Allen was a teammate, football lacrosse teammate of mine, and he's the one that nominated me uh, several years ago to be uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, and uh, I, I couldn't uh, 
Thank you very much. Uh, I didn't realize it, but I also thank uh, Walt Munsey because uh, I was a lacrosse player, and if they didn't have lacrosse, I wouldn't be where I am. So obviously there's a history here, and uh, i got to thank you for putting lacrosse on the map here at, at ESL. I didn't realize that you played in history. You might have. I don't know. You know <laughs> if, if we lost to Maryland in the championship game, you might have called me for one or two, so maybe, maybe I have a fresh. Um, and so then we get down to what does it take? You can't do it by yourself, and, and you've heard this three or four times tonight. You know, it's family, it's friends, it's teammates, it's coaches, and I, I got to repeat that. You know, I, I grew up in a single uh, parent home. Um, my mom never missed a game, but what got me going is my coaches. They were great mentors to me, they were great examples to me about to be a good human being, a good man, to how to have his drive and desire. You know, Coach Medjicaro's back there. We just had our 50th football reunion for the 1972 team. Went down to Venice, Florida, saw Coach Griffin, Coach Magicaro, Coach Mentel. It was a great time. I had 30, 40 of, of, the, of the team down there. And it just brought back great memories of what they did for me as a human being and to make me a better person. Um, you know, my friends, I mean, they're all here. I've got, you know, four or five football teammates. I've got two lacrosse teammates here. We have Vernon Burnett, we have Brett Stalin, uh, Bosco Mangowski. And uh, I know we've got uh, Gary Allen and uh, obviously Gary Lewis you heard from. And then my coaches, I just mentioned three of them. Uh, I was a baseball player, I, you know, from the time I could walk, I was playing baseball until I got to be a freshman in high school. And then my high school freshman year, I said, you know, baseball, yeah, I like football. And then there was a guy called Coach AC who just came to school. He convinced me to play lacrosse and I fell in love with the game and that's where it started. And that's what got me where I am. Uh, my coaches, Coach Hammond, uh, decided to bring me up to varsity as a sophomore. Uh, it made a big difference. Gary Lewis was mentioning this to me, I didn't remember. But my sophomore year, that year, there was only 16 of us on the team. So we got lots of playing time. Um, but it was a great time, and you obviously get lots of experience, and that certainly uh, contributed to, to my success as I moved forward in my life. And then uh, Coach uh, Mercer was the follow-on coach, which uh, kept me moving through. You know, then I went off to the Naval Academy and did my things at, at Navy. And again, I had great coaches there um, and good teammates. So uh, again, I, I'm repeating what everyone else is saying, but you, you can't do it by yourself. There's just no way. You have to have a good teammate around you, a good team around you, good coaches around you, and you can be a successful person. And then, you know, I, I don't want, also want to thank this young lady back here, my bride of 45 years. I played lacrosse till I was 59 years old, and she followed me around, traveled with me, across the country to other countries. We played in various tournaments. Um, it was a great time. We played in three different world games and had a, had a lot of fun, played great lacrosse, had great teams, and uh, it all culminated with me being inducted into this Hall of Fame. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the Hall of Fame committee. I thank you for my teammates, my friends, um, for uh, giving me this opportunity. recipients that played for me because uh, not only did I do the lacrosse here but I did coach hoops for five years first five years and uh, first year <coughs> we uh, <coughs> I think we won one game second year we won the league uh, and uh, the, the heart of that whole team was a guy named John da Vinci I coached basketball after I left here, I continued, I, so I coached varsity basketball for 37 years. And uh, at times people ask me, who's the best <clears throat> all around player you ever coached? Interestingly enough, it goes back to the guy that I coached on the first team, and that's John Lovinci. John was the best all around player I ever dealt with. 
best rebounder I ever had was big George Bertrand. I don't think anybody here would argue with George, right, about that. <laughs> Bill, you, you know George. But John Novici scored 29.6 games, 29.6 points a game. That's without three points, you know. And uh, John was the real deal. We played Linton High School in Schenectady. Uh, and we went out there, and they were pretty good. A guy by the name of Pat Riley burned us in the fourth quarter. You know Pat Riley, professional, the whole deal. After the game, the coach really took a liking to John and got him connected to Mississippi Southern. That's where John went to school. And he went down there, and the coach down there at that time was named Freddie Lewis. <coughs> Freddie Lewis was there for a little bit. John starts to get settled in. Freddie Lewis leaves and gets the SU job. Comes up here with Roy Danford, Coach Bing and that whole crew, and uh, that kind of left John uh, out of a loop down there and eventually came back here and married his high school sweetheart, Nina, and uh, <coughs> successful from there. So, John Ovinci is getting into the uh, Summit Hall of Fame and is well-deserved. Great athlete all around, all county in all the sports, football, basketball, and baseball. He actually probably should have been a professional baseball player. He was probably better in baseball than any but uh, we just didn't have the connections and everything to make that happen. At any rate, uh, when we won the league that, that year, ES, e East Syracuse received the trophy. And it was displayed in East Syracuse Middle School. And then the two combined with Manoa. And towards 1965, when I was leaving, I looked around at, in the trophy case, the trophy was gone. And I caught wind that it might have been stashed with a bunch of stuff, junk, in a back closet somewhere behind the custodial room. I went in there and dug up the trophy. And I kept that trophy with me since 1966. Now, since East Syracuse and Manoa are recognizing East Syracuse in their Hall of Fame, I think that it's about time that, that trophy finds a restful place in the East Syracuse M Manoa trophy case somewhere. Not on my shelf. So, I'm presenting you on behalf of the 1962-63 uh, County League Championship team, the trophy, and uh, proudly display that along with a picture, and Huey, we got to where is Huey back there somewhere, we got your picture in there as well, and uh, a little description of who these guys are, Huey can identify them all for you on a piece of paper, and we'll have that displayed. Most of my students would be surprised they actually printed pictures. Um, there's another introduction for John. I'm going to go out to the West Coast to uh, Nico Tamarian for an introduction and to hear from John himself. Well, hey, Uncle John, it's Nico, and I just want to say first and foremost, congratulations on your induction into the East Syracuse Manoa Athletics Hall of Fame. Certainly, obviously, well deserved. I will say, my dad, my entire life, always told me John da Vinci was the best athlete to ever come out of East Syracuse. But as you know better than most, like 90% of the time my dad opens his mouth, he's usually pretty full of it. In this case, thankfully and certainly gladly he wasn't. Um, I've always been so proud to call you Uncle John. Um, and certainly that's the case today all these years later. And it goes without saying, I, I can't thank you enough for everything you and Aunt Nina did for us kids. And I mean, we're talking real world stuff. I'm not the person I am today. I genuinely mean that from the bottom of my heart uh, without you two and certainly everything you did for me and my brother. Uh, that was just the highlight of our youth, seeing you. And 
In my adult life, I'd always just be so excited any time we would cross paths. And I do mean that everything I've enjoyed in my career, I'm in my new studio here in Seattle, genuinely mean I would not be here without you. So on your special day, uh, congratulations. I'm so happy for you and the family. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the night. And certainly, I'm just so pleased that anybody who walks in that school will see your name there. Well-deserved and just awesome stuff. Thank you so much, and congratulations again. Hello, my name is John DaVinci, and at this time, I'd like to thank the people who have selected me for the ESM Athletic Hall of Fame. I would also like to uh, thank a few coaches that helped me along the way. Um, coach Walt Munsey, my basketball coach, my junior and senior year. Dick Jarvis, my basketball coach, my sophomore year, and my baseball coach, Mr. Walters. I thank you all for this great honor. That Nico kid can speak really well. Um, next up, Jim Gorney to introduce our next team. Congratulate the, all the inductees that are here today, and thanks everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, hopefully in the future we may be switching this ceremony to the fall where it's a little bit warmer and easier to travel, but that might be 2025. We will see. At any rate, the next little bit is going to be all about the Williams family, and we're going to start with Michael. Um, I had the pleasure of watching Mike develop into one of the elite athletes in Section 3 throughout his whole high school career. By the time he graduated, he was ranked number two in both the 110 meter high hurdles outdoors and the 400 meter intermediate hurdles. If you don't know what 400 meters in, it's a quarter mile, it's one lap around the track. Just doing a little education here. But you also have to get over 10 barriers that are 36 inches high. One of the toughest races uh, in track and field, it still is. Um, he held the 110 high hurdle record for 40 years, and unfortunately he's here one year too late because it was just broken last year after 40 years, but he still holds that 400 meter intermediate hurdle record at 54.1 seconds. Um, most high school male athletes would only dream of running 54 seconds for 400 meters without barriers. That's what makes the 54.1 that Mike did uh, so incredible. It was really, really a fast time. He's had it for 41 years. And no offense, Coach Mark Carr, the boys coach, but I don't see that being broken for quite a while. In 1982, he, set, he was the indoor section three champion at 300 meter dash, the 55 meter high hurdle champion. And in outdoor, he was OHSL champ in the high hurdles and the open 400 meter champion. Decided to run him a couple of times without those barriers to see what he could do. He was the section three champ in the 110 highs and the 400 meter low hurdle champ or intermediate hurdle champ in the 400 meter hurdles outdoors as well. TV five athlete of the week and um, I have two memories of Michael in high school. Uh, one was at the Baldwinsville Liverpool Invitational his senior year, where we like to experiment with our athletes. And that particular meet, I decided I would put him up against uh, uh, probably the best 200 meter runner in the state of New York that year, uh, Jim Drake from Jamesville DeWitt, who by the way, ended up winning three events in, in the state meet. And I decided to put Michael up against him in the 200. Michael just took him on the last turn and defeated Jim Drake for the first time Drake's year that year that he was defeated at 200 meters. And later on, we put him in the open four against a kid from Portland who was also undefeated. And I'll never forget this. Uh, back in those days, there was no online entries or anything like that. So it was just by three by five cards. So you didn't know who you were running against until they showed up. 
Mike stepped on the track and the kid from Portland took one look and went, well, I can't say what he said. He should have been disqualified on the spot for what he said. But uh, that race was over as soon as Michael stepped on the track. Um, going a little bit further, uh, Mike ended up uh, captain of his Dickinson College um, track team. Um, he went to Dickinson for his uh, four years of undergrad and after that uh, to uh, Duke for his graduate uh, to become a healthcare, uh, uh, work in the healthcare system. Uh, during, at uh, Dickinson, he also uh, competed in the 110s, the 400 relay, the 400 hurdles, and the 4x4 relay. And uh, he set indoor records at Dickinson in the 55-meter dash indoors and, the four, and a, helped the 4x400-meter um, team also set a school record at Dickinson. Mike had to come up with his family from Ashland, Virginia, and we're certainly glad he did. Uh, I want to introduce Michael Williams. It is definitely an honor to be up here tonight. You're going to hear some of the same thoughts that you've heard repeated throughout from all the speakers. It really comes as no surprise for me. It's the same foundation that every great athlete brings to the table with exception of Mike. Um, you know, when Coach Gorney first approached me about running the hurdles, I was really reluctant to do that. I was afraid of hurdles. Then I got over it. <laughs> uh, honestly, I didn't have much choice but to learn how to run fast. It was either run fast or get sister. <laughs> that just wasn't going to do. Um, thank everyone for coming tonight. Uh, thank you for the selection committee and for what you've done here. This has been an extraordinary uh, uh, weekend for us. Uh, I really applaud you for the hard work and the efforts and what you're doing to celebrate the legacy of DSM athletics. Uh, you don't often get a phone call from a high school coach and after you get done with the phone call you hang up and you say to yourself, It gave me an opportunity to reflect on my high school years, uh, something I don't often do, and I wish I would do that more. But upon reflection, I learned uh, how formative my high school years were. The, um, the, the individual success that came with competition in soccer and in track and field, yes, that was an important part of our experience in high school. But the sense of teamwork, and camaraderie uh, from, from all the coaches in the school and the, uh, uh, the, the, the teammates that I ran with you just couldn't couldn't be beat. High school and DSM athletics in particular gave me a sense of place. It gave me a sense as a tall, skinny adolescent kid with a cheesy mustache <laughs> where I was supposed to be, what I was supposed to do, and who I was supposed to do it with. And DSM athletics gave me that sense of place, and I'm forever grateful. None of that success comes without a lot of support and encouragement from the school, from great coaches, um, from teammates, and, and especially from family. Uh, one of my most uh, uh, lasting memories is from a spring track meet uh, in my junior year. Uh, it was just a scrimmage track meet. It was, it was just really just glorified practice. A coach dragged us over to Liverpool uh, to compete against them uh, before the season started. It was kind of just, let's just see what we got here. Um, and I was warming up for hurdles. I was nervous. I hadn't run a true hurdle race since the previous year. I didn't run indoor that previous winter because I broke my ankle to try it out for the basketball team. I don't know that he's yet forgiven me for that. Um, and so we, we get there and I'm warming up and I look over as I'm warming up and there's my father leaning against the fence. And I'm like, I walk over to him, I said, what are you doing here? And he just gave me this, this really, this weird look. He said, what do you mean? I came to see your race. And it, it doesn't 
didn't seem like much, but it, it meant a lot to me. And that moment has stuck with me ever since. Um, you know, my family has, has always been there, not just Bob. Uh, two tables of family here to attest to that. Um, my sister Wendy, of course she has to be here. So. <laughs> but everybody else, thank you for coming. Uh, yes, we travel from Virginia. My brother traveled from North Carolina. Um, uh, the headliner is my mother. selection committee ever decides to create a hall of fame for moms at ESN, give us a call. <laughs> um, my father, unfortunately, who would have just loved to be part of this, uh, he could not share the room with us tonight, uh, but it's obvious from the support and the encouragement that the legacy of showing up and being there. I was upset at a couple things uh, during your career. I didn't touch upon one, but uh, at the Section 3 qualifier meet to get to the state meet in his senior year, he was warming up in the high hurdles and pulled a hamstring and could not compete. Uh, we decided right there that was over. Um, fortunately, uh, there was only one other good high hurdler in the area at the time, which was from Skinny Atlas. And when push came to shove, he was the only one that qualified, and there was two spots open. So I petitioned to get Mike back in. They let him back in, but he couldn't run the highs. So we knew one week later with a bad hammy. And by the way, there were no trainers back then. I was the trainer. <laughs> and good luck, right? And um, so we petitioned him in in both hurdle races, and we decided he would run the 400, where probably he didn't have to go out as hard try to pace him into running a race. Um, he was able to finish that race, but there was no doubt if Mike had qualified for a state meet, he would have meddled in both the highs and, and the intermediates. It's a memory I will always remember, Mike, is that particular pole hamstring. Thanks a lot for that. <laughs> Before Wendy comes up here, um, I just want to touch, say a few words about the entire Williams family. I had the pleasure of working with you. Um, you decided to get involved in track a little more than just watching his kids from a fence. He was hired as an assistant coach for uh, the track team. Um, and I have to say that uh, uh, Hugh probably uh, was uh, one of the most positive people I ever coached with. Um, he always had kind words for everybody even if I didn't. And uh, he uh, kept everything positive the whole time. And uh, him not being here tonight is obviously, a, a, I feel bad for that. But uh, I know that, uh, you know, he hopefully will be um, celebrating this as well. Um, working with you, uh, Mike, Wendy, Nikki, and Brian are both here. And uh, Gene, uh, knowing them, uh, has been a pleasure I will always cherish. Uh, Wendy, uh, Milt touched upon Wendy's successes in soccer. Um, I'm supposed to uh, touch upon her successes in track and field as well. Um, she was uh, just remarkable as a track athlete. Multi-time county champ in events ranging from 200 meters to 400 meters and one of the only three female athletes in the history of our school, even to this date, that has broken uh, 60 seconds for 400 meters. Um, Milt didn't touch upon her soccer career at St. Lawrence, so I'm gonna say just a few things about that. She went to St. Lawrence University where she was uh, a four-year starter as, as a sweeper and a captain in her junior and senior seasons. In uh, 86 and 87, she was named All-State D3 team, and in 86, she was a participant in National Championship Tournament. And she must have had quite an influence up there because they immediately hired her as an assistant coach at graduation. Um, so without further ado, Wendy, come on up.
want to thank the Hall of Fame committee for this honor, for putting together such a great night and event for all of us. Um, a big congratulations to my son and inductees, and to my brother Mike, who is being inducted tonight as well. I am very grateful to have my family here to celebrate this event, and coming from a family where all four kids participated in multiple sports, I could always count on a strong support system from my family on and off the field and the track. Uh, the best part of being part of a team at ESM, like everybody has hit on, was the relationships that developed with my teammates and my coaches. Um, the competition was always against the opponents and not amongst my teammates. Uh, when my senior year soccer team was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2019, I think 50% of the team came back for the ceremony. Uh, and you would have thought we kept in touch all these years and just because of the way we got along and were joking and laughing with each other. And this is a testament to the environment that Mr. Valerio created. We were treated like family, not to say he wasn't a demanding coach, but we established friendships that lasted years, whether we stayed in touch or not. So thank you, Mr. Valerio and Mr. Gorney, for establishing a strong foundation of friendship, leadership, and competitiveness in drive that I have shared with me since my time at ESA. I couldn't be more honored to be here, and congratulations again to everyone. joke who's going to retire first, me or Jim Gorney. Jim Gorney started teaching at DSM the year I was born. <laughs> True story. Um, our next inductee is uh, Michael, uh, Mike Zarillo, who's a member of arguably the best high school gymnastics team ever assembled in the state. Competing between 1978 and 1982, he was an all-conference selection for all four years and was all-state in 79, 80, and 82, as well as a state champion in 1981 and 82. Moved on to Arizona State, helping his team to a NCAA Gymnastics Team Championship in 1986. He was later hired and worked for the Charlotte Hornets and uh, was their slam dunk Slam dunk team mascot in in Oklahoma City and, and New Orleans. He was the NBA All-Star Slam Dunk Champion 91, 92, and 93, and mascot of the year. Um, Mike is unable to be here this evening. He did send in a video, which we'll watch in a second, but first I'd like to call up his parents to accept the award. Hello, I'm Michael Zarillo. Uh, I went to ESM, graduated in 1982. Uh, very honored to be inducted into the Athletic Hall of Fame. And i uh, like to say thank you to a few people that really helped make that happen for me. Um, first of all, would be my coach, Ron Casso, who is also my uncle. And his two sons, Mark Casso and Chris Casso, who are also inducted into the ESM Hall of Fame. Um, were a big influence on me and how to take gymnastics very serious. And we trained every day but Sunday for about 13 years, all four years in high school. And then as we both all went to college. Uh, some of my other teammates that really had a big effect, effect on me was uh, David Shannon, who's still to this day one of my best friends and uh, competed alongside me in middle school and in high school. He went on to Arizona State as well as I did and then transferred to Houston Baptist University where he had a great career. Um, I think that gymnastics is a great sport. I know it's not as popular now as when I was doing it, um, 
but it's taught me a lot through life and through how to overcome uh, pain, how to overcome uh, fear, uh, learning progressions that have applied to all aspects of my life. Um, I continued on doing gymnastics in college. I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to Arizona State. I redshirted my freshman year um, because they had a lot of seniors on the team and it gave me a year to grow and get stronger. I entered college at 17. So I was a little bit on the young side and then competed the next four years and was lucky enough to have a great team, great coaches there, uh, Don Robinson, rest in peace, and uh, Scott Barkley. But we were uh, fortunate enough in 1986 to win a national championship um, and had some great teammates there, uh, Dennis and Dan Hayden, Mark Bowers, John Sweeney, Paul Linney, Kevin McComb, Moses Dunka, they all were a big influence and we came together to win that national championship. But also some other people that have affected my life and gymnastics career, uh, Kurt Thomas, again, rest in peace, uh, and Mitch Gaylord were out training in Arizona and I trained with them for a while before uh, Arizona State. And uh, they both taught me how to take gymnastics serious and what it takes to become stronger and the dedication. Um, from there, I had kind of a unique career. Uh, one of my roommates in college, Bob Wolf, who was a very good gymnast, um, he ended up after his career there uh, being the mascot for the Phoenix Suns basketball team, was a gorilla, and I was his roommate still. And for two years, I watched him do that and travel the world and get to do all types of cool stunts and perform all over. Um, and he also found out about a position that opened up in Charlotte, North Carolina, and told them about me. So he was very instrumental in me becoming the Charlotte Hornets mascot. And I continued to do that for 17 years from 1990 to um, 2007. Uh, he continued to do it for 33 years uh, uh, from 88 until just recently. And at one point, there were six of us that were all gymnasts on the Arizona State men's gymnastics team that were mascots in the NBA. So somewhat of a unique, uh, for, we call it a fraternity. Um, got to travel all over the world and perform using a lot of my gymnastic skills, uh, as well as some of the things I had to learn along the way, how to dance and how to entertain people without being able to talk. Um, but that was a, a very fulfilling career. And it was about, with gymnastics and mascot, 30 years of, uh, performing and uh, somewhat abusing my body. I just recently, uh, a month ago, had my 16th surgery, a little back fusion surgery, but uh, recovering well and I wouldn't change anything. I had a great time and it all started uh, at ASM and the gymnastics team there and the foundation that I got. So I just like to say thank you to everybody, especially my family, my mom and dad, my brother, Tony, Nikki, and Terry, who oftentimes, when I was younger, had to pick me up or take me to gymnastics. And uh, they were uh, always there to support me as well. So that's it in a nutshell. And I just wanted to thank everyone and um, say it's a very big honor. I wish I could be there, uh, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to attend. So it's available now on YouTube if you want anybody to see it this evening. I will also edit it to put all those videos in. So if you wait a day or two, the videos will all be in as well. So if you want to take a look at it. Um, there are pictures and posters from the gym. Please take them home with you. Those are for you. If you have somebody you feel that should be in this Hall of Fame, please nominate them. We don't know who everybody is who ever participated. So if you have an idea, please nominate. And one more time this evening, can we have a round of applause for our inductees? Thank you very much.